اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم من احمده و نفخه و نفسه بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم و سبحان الله و الحمد لله رب العالمین اللهم شهری صدری یسر لی امری و عد وقت دن من لسانی یا رب العالمین uh, today's presentation is going to be about the third aspect that i have alluded to before that is uh my lectures inshallah will be uh concerned with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sat uh quran the kitab the guidance that has been sent and that has been sent to men and therefore man himself so the first two a presentation by way of uh powerpoint presentations uh, were on uh, the uh, first topic the word of allah and thereby allah zat uh then we did two on quran itself and this is the fifth one and this is on man and i begin with man his creation and more and more really pertains to uh man's eventual death uh on this earth and rebirth so this may prove to be a little bit longer than uh what it was the last time i did the talk but then the subjects vary and i'll try to finish it today to the extent possible i am hoping that i will be able to do that inshallah so as we always do we should remind ourselves that we should be one of those who truly reflect in order to understand this quran in surah araf al araf I 11 Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says yes indeed we have created you that is khalaqnakum and then formed you sabarnakum the sequence of these two statements we have created you that is brought you into being as living organisms and then formed you that is given you shape as human beings is meant to bring out the fact of man's gradual development in the individual sense from the embryonic stage to full fledged existence as well as of the evolution of the human race as such in surah al hijr ayah 26 and indeed we have created man out of sounding clay salsal out of dark slime hamain transmuted masnoon the transmutation here means that the dark slime has been altered in its composition with time and brought into shape there are also many references in the quran to man's having been created out of clay teen or out of dust turab both these terms again signify man's lowly biological origins as well as the fact that his body is composed of various organic and inorganic substances existing in their elementary forms or in other combinations on and or in the earth the term salsal occurring in three verses in surah 15 and once in surah ar-rahman ayat 14 adds a further dimension to this concept it denotes dried clay that emits a sound when it is struck since it is used in the quran exclusively for the creation of man salsal seems to contain an allusion if you will to the power of articulate speech which distinguishes man from all other animal species as well as to the brittleness of his existence metaphorical as the construction of the segment of i26 above shows this salsal is stated to have evolved out of hama which according to some authorities is the plural of hama signifying dark mud having an offensive odor and stinking that is dark fetid mud or dark slime as has been translated above Meanwhile the participial adjective masnoon which qualifies this noun hamain hama denotes as arazi puts it both altered that is in its composition 
and brought into shape, thus the masnoon rendering above as transmuted, which to a good extent combines both of the above meanings of altered and brought into shape, transmuted that is. One is here in this small segment, therefore, of 1526, a description of the primeval biological environment out of which the sounding clay, the matrix, as it were, of man's physical body has evolved in, according, in accordance with Allah's plan of creation. And that is a profound thing to have occurred in the life of man. In Al Furqan, Ayat 5, partial ayat. Verily, we have created every one of you out of dust, Turabin, then out of a drop of sperm, then out of a germ cell, then out of an embryonic lump complete in itself and yet incomplete. So, in this segment of Ayat 5 of Surah 22, created out of dust is meant again to indicate man's lowly biological origin and his affinity with other earthly substances. Frequent references in the Quran to man's being created out of clay or out of dust or out of the essence, sulala, of clay point to the fact that his body is composed of various organic and inorganic substances existing on or in the earth, as well as to the continuous transmutation of those substances through the intake of earth-grown food into reproductive cells, thus stressing, stressing man's humble origins and hence the debt of gratitude which he owes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having endowed him in spite of his humble origins with a conscious soul. This is the first place where if you look back as a fully evolved human being, you realize that humility should be your raison d'etre. In other words, humility is where it begins. Humility should sustain with us throughout our life in order for us to be a truly submitting individual to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala zat. The past tense, we have created or we have caused him to remain, etc., emphasizes the fact that all this has been ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and has been happening again and again ever since man was first brought into being by him. In this segment of this ayat 5 of Surah 22, the phrase rendered complete and yet incomplete, and reference is to Bhagavi and Tabari, it alludes to the various stages of embryonic development. In addition, Tabari explains the expression as denoting the stage at which the embryonic lump Mudha as, has as yet no individual life or in his words, when no soul has yet as yet been breathed into it. Then in Surah Taha, Ayat 55, out of this earth we have, have we created you and into it shall we return you and out of it shall we bring you forth once again. Minha khalaknakum wa fiha nuidukum wa minha nuh rajakum nuh rejakum rejakum taratun ukhra. This verse, as we all know, is ritually recited when throwing a handful of soil three times on the body of a departed Muslim after it has been laid in the grave to signify one, the departed's creation from this earth, two, the return to his earth to this earth. And three, the bringing forth once again from this earth on judgment day. Creation of man's body out of dust, as is mentioned several times in the Quran, that is out of substances both organic and inorganic, found in their elementary forms on or in the earth, is yet another way that the Quran states creation of man 
out of the earth. Its return to it signifies the dissolution of the body after death back into the elementary substances of which it was composed. All these facts, creation, substance, subsistence, that is sustenance, and dissolution contain the messages of one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's almightiness, two, the ephemeral, that is the transitory and short-lived nature of man's life on earth, and three, his future resurrection. SubhanAllah. In the ayat preceding this particular ayat, this is ayat 20, uh, 55, mm -hmm. in ayat 54, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of the earth made amenable for man's livelihood, and the ayat ends with the exhortation to us that in this there are messages indeed for those who are endowed with reason. So indeed how remarkable it is that prior to this ayat 55 recited ritually on burial, at burial time, Allah exhorts in ayat preceding it in 54, those with reason, that in the next ayat there is a message which if the man of reason, Ul in Nuha, is able to reason out, he will have no choice but to acknowledge the reality of this message and the reality of Allah's almightiness. And in ayat al, uh, uh, 3 of Surah Al-Nahl, the Quran brings out this, the inner truth of Allah's creation process. So this particular ayat mentions, He, that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has created the earth, the heavens and the earth in accordance with an inner truth, bil haqq. That is, in accordance with a meaning and a purpose known only to Him. We take this bil haq and we translate it to truth and inner truth and more broadly in accordance with a meaning and a purpose that is known only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This message is returned to in Surah Yunus, ayat 5, thus, none of this has he created without an inner truth. That is, Allah has not created this except then in accordance with the truth. And these three early giants, scholars, Zamakh Shari, Bhagavi, and Razi, render it thus. Allah has not created this except to fulfill a definite purpose in consonance with his planning wisdom, implying that everything in the universe, whether existent or potential, concrete or abstract, is meaningful and that nothing is accidental. Put another way, the truth underlying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation, including his creation of man, is fulfillment of a definite purpose in consonance with his planning wisdom. Therefore, everything in the universe, whether it's existent or it is potential, whether it's concrete or it is abstract, is meaningful. Again, nothing is accidental. Further in Surah Rum, Ayat 8 partly states, have they never learned to think themselves? Allah has not created the heavens and the earth and all that is between them without an inner truth and a term set by him. The implication then of Allah's creation in accordance with an inner truth is that Without a differentiation between right and wrong or true and false, there will be no inner truth in the concept of a divinely planned creation. Finally, this message of creation is returned yet again in Surah Ali Imran, Ayat 191, and in Surah Sad, Ayat 27, thus. O our sustainer, you have not created any of this without meaning and purpose. Batilan. We have not created heaven and earth and all that is between them without meaning and purpose. Batilan. As is the surmise of those who are bent on denying the truth. In these two ayat, however, the term Batilan, rather than Illa bil haq, 
is expressed. Nonetheless, this, the implication is the same. And so Muhammad Asad translates the expression batilan, literal translation is in vain, suitably as without meaning and purpose. I'll now move on to the second uh, subject of this, Allah's creation of all things from water. In Surah Anbiya, Surah Nur, in Surah Furqan, partly at 30, 45, and 54 respectively, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we made out of water every living thing. Kulla shayin hayyid. And it is Allah who has created all animals, da'abbatin, out of water. And he it is who out of this very water has created man, bashar. Note in 2445, al-Nur, the term da'abbatin, rendered animals above, denotes every corporeal being endowed with both life and spontaneous movement. Hence, in its widest sense, it comprises the entire animal world, including man. The statement that Allah made out of water every living thing expresses most concisely a truth that is nowadays universally accepted by science. It has threefold meaning. One, water and specifically the sea was the environment with which the prototype of all living matter originated. Two, among all the innumerable existing or conceivable liquids, only water has the peculiar properties necessary for the emergence and development of life. And three, the basic, the physical basis of all living cell, whether in plants or in animals, and which represents the only form of matter in which the phenomena of life are manifested, consists overwhelmingly of water and is thus entirely dependent on it. The threefold meaning described above thus elucidates the expression of the Quran, Allah made out of water every living thing. It thereby asserts unequivocally the emergence of life from and within a, a unitary element, water. The threefold meaning stated on the prior exhibit thus elucidates the expression of Quran, Allah made clear what Allah made out of what every living thing, and it thereby asserts unequivocally the emergence of life from and within a unitary element water. I repeat this for a purpose because then I add on. In I-2130, immediately prior to we made out of water every living thing, the Quran states the following, the earth and the heavens were once one single entity which we then parted asunder. This then alludes to the unitary origin of physical universe. Together, the unitary origin of the physical universe and the emergence of life from and within an equally unitary element, water, points to the existence of a unitary plan underlying all creation and hence, it thereby points to the existence and oneness that is the unitary essence, as it were, of the creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, before I move on to this last segment, uh, I spoke about the creation out of earth, and then the creation out of water. A couple of weeks ago, I had touched upon this in one-on-one -on -one conversation with Brother Shahzado, and I asked which came first and what is the order of it? And he right away started speaking about it, and he spoke for about 10 to 15 minutes without referring to any other material because we were just talking one-on-one, -on -one. and then of course there were other people and something happened and we got interrupted and that conversation never went any further. I would really request Brother Shahzadu sometime to again retell me and whoever it is with us that ties man created out of water and man created out of earth. And he did it starting from the Big Bang, 
going on very methodically in scientific terms. And I thought it was beyond awesome. So any opportunity that he gets, and he just recited, it doesn't have to refer to any exhibits, but if he does that, it will fill the void that is in this presentation. It will connect these two, and I'll appreciate it very much if he does that. Let me move on then to recurrence of birth, death, and rebirth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. This is exemplified by the expression voiced in several places in the Quran. He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knows all that enters the earth and all that comes out of it, as well as all that descends from the skies and all that ascends to them. This is Surah Shaba, Ayat 2. This ayat, wherein the word ma, that is man, all that, Ma, that is all that appears four times as you can see on the exhibit I have underlined and highlighted it. It comprises things physical as well as spiritual. So for example, waters appearing underground and reappearing, the metamorphosis of seed into plant and of decaying plant into oil and coal. Traces of all artifacts and entire civilizations buried in the earth and then reappearing within the sites and the consciousness of later generations of humankind. The transformation of dead bodies of animal and men into elements of nourishment for new life. The ascent of earthly vapors towards the skies and their descent as rain, snow or hail. And the ascent toward the heavens of man's longings, his hopes, his ambitions, and the descent of inspiration into the minds of men, and thus a revival of faith and thought, and within it, the growth of new artifacts, new skills, and new hopes. In short, the seemingly endless recurrence of birth, death, and rebirth which characterizes all of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation, including human beings. Again, Surah Yunus, unto him, you all must return. This in truth, Allah's, this is in truth Allah's promise. For behold, he originates creation, khalq, creates it in the first instance, and then return it, bring it forth anew. And in our room, Ayat 11, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala originates the creation, again, khalq, creates in the first instance, and then return it, yuidahu, bring it forth anew, that is, and in the end, unto him, you will be brought back. The noun khalq primarily denotes creation, bringing into being anything that did not exist before. Subsequently, it denotes the result or object of creation, that is a created being or beings. And finally, khalq is used in the sense of man in the generic connotation of this word that is mankind, makhluq. In parentheses above, an alternate meaning is introduced for the verb yuiduhu, bring it forth anew. In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect, recreate by a new act of creation. The pronoun who, it or him, in the verb yuido who, has been mostly translated for a human. Allah brings him forth anew. So in ayat 4 of Surah 10, that was quoted above, the fact that it refers to the individual resurrection of a human being becomes clear from the sequence of the ayat, that is, to the end that he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may reward with equity all who attain to faith and do righteous deeds. And unto him you all will be brought back. Although this statement is phrased in almost exactly the same word as in 10.4 and 30.11, that is, I'm referring now to I-27 of Surah 20, uh, 30, and it is who creates all life in the first instance and then brings it forth anew. 
So although this statement is phrased in almost exactly the same words as in the two ayat I referred to at the beginning of this exhibit, here evidently it has a more general purpose relating not only to man and man's individual resurrection, but to the creation and constant creation, recreation of all life. So to recap this, represent, uh, this presentation, this presentation is primarily dealt with physical, biological process of man's creation and his ultimate recreation as per the Quran. Aspects of man's intelligence and ruh have not been addressed in this presentation. Maybe in future, if Allah allows me, I may try to do that as well. The unitary origin of the physical universe and emergence of life from the uni unitary element water points to the existence of a unitary plan which underlies all creation, which can only point to existence of the unitary essence, the creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Man's created creation out of water, out of earth, that is dust, clay, sounding clay, transmuted dark slime, his ultimate physical death and his resurrection by a new act of creation, all this is in accordance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wisdom. All creation and recreation is meaningful, nothing is accidental. The creation process is in accordance with the truth, bil haqq, with a meaning and purpose fully known only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And man's elevation from this very lowly origins to a being who is fully formed, sabbaha, and imbued with Allah given intelligence, his reasoning abilities that is, and Allah's inspired ruh, soul, demands of man his never ending praise and gratitude to his creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. O oh Allah, spread your mercy upon this gathering. Shower us with your blessings. Increase our knowledge. Grant us your forgiveness. And reward us by the company of his prophets. Your prophets in the highest place in heaven. al -Firdaus al -Ala. Ya Allah, purify our hearts. Strengthen our faith. Increase our knowledge. And make us benefit from that which you have taught us. Ya Allah, provide remedy to us and our friends and relatives who are sick. Grant them permanent cure that leaves no illness. O oh Allah, forgive our parents and all our friends and relatives who have passed away. Grant them your mercy, make their grave a garden from heaven, and grant them a firdaus alal. Ya Allah, accept our rep repentance, wash our, away our sins, respond to our supplication, establish our evidence, and guide our hearts. Ya Allah, we seek from you all the good, whether we know it or we don't, and we seek your refuge from all the evil, whether we know it or we don't. O oh Allah, grant us the power and ability that we may be grateful for your favors which you have bestowed upon us and upon our parents, and that we may do righteous deeds that are pleasing to you, and guide our children, protect them, and make them righteous. Truly, we have turned to you in repentance, and truly, we are Muslims. O oh Allah, we seek refuge in you from incapacity, from laziness, from fear, from greed, from poverty, and from the torment of the grave. Ya Allah, we ask with every name you have elected for yourself that none of us leave this gathering, except with our pains relieved, our worries removed, our debts paid, our weaknesses concealed, our sins forgiven, and our needs fulfilled. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Adad khalqi wa rada nafsahi wa azad arshi wa rada. Allahumma sallam. Salli Allah wa sallam wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alayhi ashabi ajma'in. Wal as inna al-insana lafi khus illa al-lazina amanu wa amilu al-swalihati wa tawasu bil-haqqi wa tawasu bil-sab. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.